My name is DJ Snoop, like the name says it all. I'm a DJ, uh, I'm a music producer, uh, as well as an artist. I'm on the chair with friend. Now. Good evening, everybody. And today, our very special guest is the OG himself, DJ Snoop. How you doing, Mokota? How we doing? I'm good, I'm good. Thank you very much for welcoming me. Yes. <laughs> uh, we are really we appreciate it. Yeah. So, without further ado, let's get to this. I uh, would like to know from um, what the story behind the brand you just made. How do you know why there is the problem? Well, DJ Snoop is a multi talented person. So, DJ uh, Snoop is coming from a very long time. Well, um, what's that calling me Snoop? Uh, I was a great day from Columbia College where I was studying. So we had uh, what we call the greenest concept. So each and everybody had to pick uh, their favorite artist so they can perform the, that song for the greenest concept as a welcome uh, to a school, as a newcomer. So yeah, I picked uh, Bauer actually. So to my surprise, uh, when I climb on the stage so I can perform, and I said it first, uh, to perform and then they bring uh, someone as, as well, like, okay, so you're gonna be Snoop and he's gonna be Dr. Dre and <laughs> he's gonna be Bauer. So, the shortest person actually took uh, uh, the role of uh, performing as Bauer. So, amongst the group, I was the tallest one, so they gave me the, 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 you know, the, the pleasure of being uh, Snoop, you know, the honor of performing as Snoop, you know. <laughs> so, and the good thing is that I actually knew how to sing the whole entire song, so yeah. So, Bauer comes in and starts performing. And then, all of the blue, I pop out, performance stroke, and Dr. Dre also came on board. So, it was actually entertaining and kind of refreshing. And so, that people actually liked the performance. Since they said, calling me Snoop, most people only came to realize what is my real name while I was visiting the phone. Even my school principal used to be my math teacher. He never actually knew my real name <laughs> until the 12th, when there was a scenario where I was called to the office. And when somebody said my real name, and he was like, Who is that? <laughs> no. Is the guy in 12B he said, No, in that 12B, I know all of them because I teach them. So I do not know who is looking that. I mean, uh, who is Helder? Because my real name is actually Helder. The principal was, they explained to him, no, Helder Zoo, Helder Zoo is like, no, until my English class teacher actually walked into the office by accident and said, no, Helder is smooth. It's like, huh? Why such an ugly name? <laughs> huh? Or oh, if the guy, you are, you are having a, a, a nice name. Elder. Elder is a good name. Why Snoop from Elder to Snoop? Though? He goes, hey, Snoop! Elder! Come to the office through the intercom. Yeah. So the whole school. Was <laughs> yeah, that's how I became Snoop. So, yeah, after the 12, um, you know, as a youngster, being in, spending my whole life in the hostel, primary school hostel, high school hostel. So, that was my first time actually to be out of the hostel. Started attending a lot of parties with friends, going to places. Yeah. So, from attending parties, I actually started developing the love of uh, DJing. Because uh, I'll go to this place and I find this girl with a laptop, is playing, uh, playing music and stuff like that. And I was like, I can actually do better than this. Yeah. So, I started collecting music. With time, as I said, I've uh, been collecting music. Uh, sometimes I end up at a party where there's no, uh, there's no good music. I would take, bring my CD bag and we put on the, on the CD players and we listen to music. Yeah, so slowly, most of the time when people having fun, they started calling me. Don't you, can you come and play for us some Namibian songs and stuff like that? I'm like, okay, cool, I'll be coming. During that period, I also ventured into different type of businesses, whereby I focus mainly into music recording. Yeah, focus mainly into music recording and um, I saw a lot of artists coming in and out. But then in the process, I actually came to realize that uh, there was no money in music as a music producer. 
So as an artist, you hardly get calls for shows, you know, when it's a small place. There is no really much entertainment going around whereby they need a, 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 a artist to come and perform. But the DJs are always needed. So I actually came to realize that uh, I have been spending too much time sitting in my room producing music and getting nothing at all. Money was not really coming very well. So when it comes to the end of the month, after you pay your rent, you are left with peanuts. <laughs> so, yeah. And then I said at moment, I think it's time to convert. It's when I sold my sound, my studio equipment to buy DJ equipment. So I switched from a music producer to a DJ. So I sold my studio equipment, yeah, yeah. bought myself DJ equipment, and started promoting myself. And what name would I go with better than the name that they already have given me already in Snoop? Started going to places, started playing music here and there. The name keeps on going up and going up. And eventually, I decided, no man, this is actually. Uh, making quite good money, so I have great quite more sound equipment. And in the meantime, when there's no activities like going on, then I'm actually a car dealer. So I'm traveling to different countries, uh, uh, easy buying cars, selling them here in Libya, some selling in Angola. So, in that process of uh, buying cars, meeting with uh, car dealers, and stuff like that, and meeting new people from different countries, and that's how. Started uh, connecting to other people that are also DJs as well. I mean, that started getting invitations to go and DJ in South Africa, when DJ in Botswana, when DJ in Angola. That's so. Man, you actually, it's, it's a little bit kind of tricky, confusing. But it was hard. But uh, when it was time for me to switch, I was at the point whereby I have evaluated myself. That's okay. I have been producing music for a long time and, and sitting here for a long time here, money is not coming in. So after really evaluating myself, the decision actually came a little bit easy because it, it came to a point whereby I'm coming from music, a lifestyle of music still. So basically I'm still in the music industry, so that uh, I won't be sitting anymore in the studio. Now I can get to explore the world. Yeah, but the fear of having the wrong choice. What if I made the wrong choice? But eventually it became easy. Yeah, it's a hard decision, but eventually it became easy. I think in French, it gets a little bit more. So it actually became a fun thing. Yeah, so I actually came to realize that the studio was like a, being in prison in one city, in, in one place, confined in one place, making prisoners. But being a DJ, you are in many places in different, in different times. So, all I needed just to spread my wings was the, the, the car to move me around. Yeah, that was the difficult part because sometimes you have to climb taxis. Eventually, I got a lot of friends that just got cars and they've been taking us around ever since. It was just it was easy to go. I think about it, but I wanted to come when I was a child. Actually, it was never my decision. My father actually made choices for me what I should become. Because he actually realized that I was good in the so he wanted to become a scientist. Yeah. So he actually encouraged me to do science field. But for myself as a child, Sure. No, no. Become. Just became, I just focused on becoming what my father wanted me to be. Yeah, and then the father that became a DJ was surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There are a lot of factors actually that have put me through, uh, get me courage to do whatever I had to do so I can be who I am. My parents, uh, especially my father, is a very big uh, factor in my life. So it helps me make a lot of decisions. The good thing about me, myself, as a person, is that uh, I believe in balance. Positive and negative. Those two things exist. They are there, and that's why the world is in balance. Because you cannot have a bad without uh, 
negative or positive. So I can be very positive and I can be very negative. In a room where there is uh, probably basically about uh, 100 people who have maybe hope of positive that no, not worry, everything will be fine, this be for positive, nobody must be negative. I can be one of those people that can examine it. I said, no guys, what if this happens? What will you do? And I know most people don't like to hear that. What if the only one to hear that uh, it's going to be good, it's going to be fine. No, I'm not that kind of person. Maybe that's why that. Yeah, issues, let me just put it like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, growing up, I've always been like that. I always had a plan B. So, if I'm doing music right now, if something goes wrong, I can quickly switch to this. Yeah, so that's I say, I'm multi talented. Uh, talented. So I can easily switch from this to that, and I always work with plan B. There is nothing that I do in my life, there is no plan B. Everything I do, there is a plan B. So, because for me to reach here as an artist, it has been a long journey of influence from my father saying, do this and do that. And if I disobey, if something goes wrong, then I know what's going to be the outcome. But one thing that I encourage is that um, deep down in my head, it's like I'm not afraid of trying anything for if, if something goes wrong, I can always go to my father's house and not inside. Maybe I can do something, something, so I can pick up again. I always have it in mind that if I fail, I can rely on this, I can rely on that, and I can rely on this. Who's up to be successful? Number one, try to achieve your goals while you're still young. Because if you fail, you still have your parents or people to depend on. Because if you start late, if you fail, there might be nobody to wake up. So that means that uh, do not do not not be fear of success. Laziness, <laughs> laziness. Uh, whereby you know you just want to be. You do not uh, have that. Uh, you don't find within yourself the energy to stop doing unnecessary stuff to get up there. And, you know. Do something productive, look for a job or do a job. Always have the energy to work. Do not be lazy. laziness does not put bread on the table. Uh, communication, relationships with people. Do as much as possible to have a lot of friends so that you can create a lot of uh, connections and communication. That can actually lead you into, into something. Whenever you need something or you want to work on something, it's much, it's quite easy for you to, to do whatever you have to do if you know a lot of people. The most important thing of all of them is uh, always put God first. Always. I don't know which God you believe in, but if you believe in God, in a God, you have your God. Whatever that you believe in, but always put God first. Always put God first and ask for wisdom and ask for success in whatever you do. Yeah. Don't forget to pray. Stop. You can make a living from being a DJ. All it's needed is self discipline. If you've got self discipline, you know how to save up your money, not to misuse it. And you take uh, you take the, the art very serious. You can actually make a living from being a leader, but it is difficult in a little because of the population. It's quite small, but it's possible. First of all, is that uh, music is actually a universal language. You know, music does not have a tribe, does not have a culture, does not have does not have um, a race. So you can sing music in any language. Even someone does not understand. If music is good, it's not good, you understand? Yeah, so the problem that maybe I hear is not the language they are using to sing their music. It's not the language that they are using to sing their music. I think the problem of globalism in Namibia is uh, it's something that people have picked up and developed during high school. Yeah. And I don't think globalism is coming from people's homes. No, it's not also from homes. It's from high school, not primary school. From high school to university, that's where 
people that are developing and picking up this uh, mentality of tribalism. So you aspire, I can remember. I did my, I started my grade two from people's primary school here in Windu. And that time I did not even know that uh, this is African, this is Asian, this is what you know. We used to speak only one language, English. And everybody else used to try to speak Africans because we wanted to speak like a, it's a second language. That's how we used to communicate in the uh, you know, school, in the hostel. This uh, Oshwambo, this, you know, Oshwero, uh, other languages, it, it was a language that was mainly spoken like in the rooms, like when we were in the night before we fell asleep, or you can hear people are communicating in their native languages, the languages. That was actually never a problem. When we used to play, it was not like this is bamboo's play with bamboo's, this is the other play with the other and stuff like that. No, we used to play all of us together. So, like I said, I never knew the difference of the, I never knew the difference of, the, of these different cultures. But when I went to high school, that's actually when I noticed that something is wrong here. I came to realize that uh, the bamboos were having their own groups, so they were busy with the bamboos. And they also saw their own groups. Just uh, Reros and they like actually playing soccer, so it's like the whole soccer team just Reros. If you are a different tribe, we need to join, you need to, you need to be good. If you are not that good, you cannot join. Angolans are having their own group. Yeah, and I was actually shocked coming from primary school to high school. I actually did not know how to fit in. So I was just hanging around with my new grade eights. But in this, eventually, this grade eight, they said also training that that tribal groups, tribalism is created in high school. And then as they grow up, that's what you see now, whenever you give like, for example, like a, a, a responsibility, maybe to a bamboo guy to organize a, a show, you'll first put like these uh, people, like people who speak the language of Shwambo. If you give to Herero, same applies. If you give to any other tribe, in Namibia, an opportunity to organize an activity, the first one to put first, the people who speak the same language as them. It's not because they want to listen only to that language, it's just because it's, I don't know, it actually makes me tired, you know, <laughs> thinking about it. Yeah, it makes me tired thinking about it. But um, looking at it, uh, this tribalism, it's really hard. <laughs> it's not easy, it's really hard. Uh, especially for the DJs that uh, would not have like their own equipment at their houses and for those DJs that does not have any other source of income it's really difficult on my side it, it actually did uh, affect me quite a lot because uh, as a DJ I also provide sound and I provide uh, DJ equipment so every weekend at least somebody hire something but now there's nobody to hire anything because there's nobody going on. No musical activities happening right now. It's tough for the DJs out there who are going through the same situation. Hopefully it's a lesson that uh, depending only on one source of income, especially in the music industry, they should change the mentalities and at least uh, start having like a side thing. Like for example, Lola, Lolo Gorasek, the Namibian legend soccer player yeah i used to be surprised uh, each and every time i'm driving in the morning to drop my kids at school i'll find him walking going into government park to work and i always ask myself if this man goes to work during the day when he gets home he's tired and he has that life to be with what, what time does he get time to exercise so he can get place on that but uh, i came to learn that uh, in Namibia, you cannot take uh, talent or skills as, a, as something permanent, as a job, as a career job. Because if it fades or if that market dies, then you are stuck. See, um, the way I see this industry here in Namibia, the way it works, either you know somebody or either you're the best. So we said seeing the same artists and DJs are always at functions. And the young, the young ones are not given the opportunity. But uh, saying this, it also has to do also with your, with your quality, your music quality. 
because uh, as a DJ, I would like to play a lot of uh, artist songs. I would like, like to invite a lot of artists to my shows. But if your music quality, the way it was mixed and mastered, it's not good. It's not good to play on the speakers. I would be disencouraged to play your music. Yeah, and for the artists, there are a lot of artists there, but I don't see the music in your groups. So I wouldn't know why the newcomers that I can invite for my shows. Yeah, so they should promote themselves more, shoot video clips, uh, do good music, better lyrics. And for the big companies who are busy organizing big events, I think it's time. I think it's time for them to start uh, exploring the music market because uh, one thing I realized that they don't really explore the music market. They just uh, they just keep on work. It's like the mentalist. The mentality set just said like, okay, the only artist we know is who and who and who. So, and these are the people probably can bring up crowds and stuff like that. So, whenever they they, they uh, an event or activities. They only call them. I do not know why they keep on using the same artist. Maybe it's lack of knowledge or maybe lack of uh, lack of research. Yeah. So at fire, finally, what I can say is that uh, I think the event organizer they should start uh, doing more researches on artists and music so that they can start uh, doing a, a, a fair, do justice and fair to everyone in the industry to give everybody a shot. Any artist wants to get in contact with me or any DJs, anybody in the music industry or any other type of business, uh, the easiest way to get a hold of me is uh, via my, my mobile. Yeah, via my mobile, give me a call. If not, they can use my social, social media platform, Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, like they say. There's no better place to make a party than Angola itself. <laughs> you know? There is no better place. Because number one, the population is just too much. You no? Know? Angolans don't need a language for them to celebrate music. Everything that is good, they love it. So my best experience was actually in Angola. Because uh Without even people you know, what are seeing you play, just hearing your name, even they don't know you, <laughs> they are sort of sharing up, you understand? Yeah, and yeah, it's, man, the love in Angola for music is just too much, too powerful. So, the best place I ever enjoyed playing was Angola, because the crowd was just too beautiful, warm, welcoming, sharing. And they come out in huge numbers, so it's just dreadful. There's nothing I can say, the words cannot express it. Ever uh, memories. <laughs> <Woo! laughs> My favorite memories, uh, you know, it's like uh, I don't even feel like it's a memory because every time I move around, it's right here. It's with. Um, my artists, my group, uh, Congratulations, which is made of um, made of four artists. When we traveled uh, to Kathmandu, exit for the first time. Yeah, you know that road show, that road trip. We as a group traveling, singing and rehearsing our musics listening to music, having that great conversation in the car while I'm busy moving. The energy in that car, that's one of the greatest moments that I do have. And upon our arrival, the way they received us, the population was not that much, people not a lot, but uh, the artists themselves who were there, our arrival is like, they felt like we were the artists who were right. They didn't, it's like, they're the artists, they're, they were the big artists, but when we arrived, they made us feel like we were the show, the big artists. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, just that uh, connection, the group, the way we travel, that road was great.
<laughs> one of them is not music <laughs> for sure <laughs> one of them is not music definitely I can live without music the thing that I cannot live without you know, <laughs> I'm a very weird person yeah the thing that I cannot live without I think it's number one is a, a car because I like to move around too much, you know. <laughs> if there's no car for me to move around, it's quite difficult. My kids. So my kids are very important to me. And of course, you know, I cannot live about that, number one. I cannot live about that. <laughs> damn. <laughs> Not to Hindu, but damn. <laughs> Why I just like the view. <laughs> it's, a uh, it's, it's a beautiful view looking at the people, not at the structure. No. If you go like to Durban at the beach, at the, at the seaside, yo. I just like that view. I just like that view. It's like, shoot. Sure. I don't have to I don't have to explain it but uh, it's just amazing. It's just amazing, yeah. Devin. Uh, Roman is my father. Because it's, uh, it's one he is one man that um, he takes life very serious. And he does not let anything to put him down, no matter what. No matter what problem or situation he uh, he always find a way. Yeah, he's he's my role model. Basically, I would say my parents. So my mom, my dad, they're my role models because they are just they're just people who does not want to let life knock them down. They expose to the negative. Everything is possible and everything can also not be possible. Yeah. So um, the message that I would like to leave to the world is that uh, in life there is positive and there is negative. But beside that, do not let the negative overcome the positive. Be positive. Make sure that uh, no matter what, you become successful. If you were born poor, you are not to be blamed. The one maybe can be blamed in your parents. But if you die poor, not to be blamed. You did, you did nothing to change your life. So be positive and try to let everything work for you. Go for you. And well, to become rich, to become wealthy, to a point whereby whatever I need, I can afford. Whatever my family needs, I can support. If somebody in the street asks me for help, I can give up all the great to acquire a lot of wealth. Mm. To acquire a lot of wealth. You know, I actually agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> Most mm. people won't agree. <laughs> Don't be like, no, go to school, go to university. After university, you get a job or you open a business, you open a company, you know. Yeah, become the that doctor that is opening hearts. And then you are well known for being the super doctor. But yeah, but uh, it's not really that because at the end of the day, the world is made and designed for you to be, uh, for you to be, for you to have something good. You need to to use money. Yes. So I don't see how that succeed. I don't see how to say that I'm successful. But then I do not have the world. I do not have the money. To <laughs> Thank you for coming. Uh, it's a pleasure, it's a pleasure. Oh, I even feel like redoing it again. <laughs>